Jay Leach. He now finds himself bowling in the title match against Bob Whitcomb, who we saw for four weeks back about a month ago, decided it might be easier instead of coming in at the fourth seed to try it from the top. He's the number one seed. Jay Leach, the number three seed. Let's meet our bowlers right now. First, from Nashua, New Hampshire, right here at Little Lanes, our third seed, Jay Leach from Nashua. And Jay comes in. His league average here at Little Lanes, 120. His high single, 188. 455 is his high triple. And this is the third week in a row that we've seen him on Candlepin Stars and Strikes. A 348 to 334 win over Bob Betancourt last week to advance to this championship match. And he will take on our top seed, Bob Whitcomb from Weymouth, Massachusetts. Bobby coming in with a 125 average, a high single topping out at 199, high triple 489. Does his bowling at the East Weymouth Bowl Away and Central Park Lanes in East Boston. A thousand dollars to the winner. Even more important, a berth in the Tournament of Champions, which begins next week. Let's get right to it as Jay Leach and Bob Whitcomb are ready to go. We're ready to go too with Candlepin Stars and Strikes from Lita Lanes in Nashua on WNDS TV 50. We'll be right back. We began four weeks ago with five bowlers vying for a spot in our Tournament of Champions at the end of the year. Now we're down to two. We saw Jeff Atkins eliminate Bob Ellis. Then we saw Jay Leach oust Jeff Atkins. Leach defeated Bob Betancourt, setting up this championship match between Jay Leach of Nashua and Bob Whitcomb of Weymouth. And it'll be Jay Leach first to bowl here at his home lanes in Lita Lanes in Nashua, New Hampshire. We're ready to go with all the marbles on the line here in this championship match. $1,000 to the winner of the match, 500 to the runner-up, and for the winner, a berth in the Tournament of Champions. Ooh, the Deadwood cost him. And he starts out with a nine box. In the win over Atkins, Leach had a 384, rolling strings of 132, 121, and 131. Last week, in the win over Bob Betancourt, 348 to 334, Leach had a 109, a 117, and he finished strongly with a 122 to come from behind. and advance to this championship match. A little tougher start for him this week, though. A couple of non-mark opens to begin the championship match. And an eight box for a 17, and we'll get our first look in this series at Bob Whitcomb. And a little bit of a rooting section here that came from Weymouth. Very nice young man. We're always happy to see him. We got to watch him for four weeks, Dick, back uh, in uh, March and April. Four weeks in a row, working his way from the fourth seat to the title match. Of course, he ended up losing that to Bob uh, Burkill. He defeated Jim Orlandi, Neil Goslin, and Scott Creighton before losing 409 to 374 in the championship match to Burke Hill. Bob Whitcomb is 32 years old. He is single. He's been bowling for 25 years, rolls out of the East Weymouth Bowl away. And he's been on Channel 50 about 13 times. He was on the old Channel 5 show three times, and that's a spare for Bob Whitcomb. And the first mark of the match. He also wanted us to make sure we mentioned he also bowls at the Central Park Lanes in East Boston, which I guess we didn't mention last time. And he took quite a bit of razzing from his uh, bowling mates there at Central Park Lanes for us not mentioning it. So we apologize and acknowledge you now. Jay Leach with a nine pin drop. And 
And right on target for his first spare of this match. Talking to Jay's father before the uh, match today, Jay is feeling a considerable amount of pain in his left knee, or his sliding leg, and is wearing a brace under his, uh, his trousers. So we're hoping that that will not uh, impinge his performance today. Jay's 29 years old, works as a machinist at ME Engineering in Pelham, been there for 10 years. That's a good looking spare, too. Two marks in a row for Jay Leach. Jay's married with three young children, and Bob Whitcomb is single. And not at all happy with what he sees. Three fill on a spare. I remember when Bob was on the last time, we talked about his uh, hobby of riding his bike. Look at that shot, and look at that pin still standing in the back. <laughs> I warned him about that before we started today. I said, we've seen some really spooky things with sliding pins. And he gets the experience it for himself here. And he'll take a nine box. Big back swing. Here they come. Will it come? It goes the other way. It almost came the right way, but not quite. And the spare for Bob Whitcomb. So both bowlers with two marks in the first four frames of the first string of this championship match. And as you see, just one pin separating them. Right in the pocket. That was a beautiful shot. Really didn't get a fair shake on it. And now sizing up the wood. Where will it go? It backs up a couple of rolls. I think he'd rather see it move to the middle a little bit more as it's going right now. Oh, it might go too far the other way. If it stays right about there, I think he's got a shot. And it looks like it will. Actually, I think he'd rather have that back piece of uh, wood off the uh, lane so that it doesn't deflect it away from the eight pin, which is possible. Yep, that point is well taken. We'll see what happens here as Jay tries to size it up. I think you just have to go for the red stripe of that wood in the middle. That's the spot. Take it that way. After all that sizing up, <laughs> he planned it that way. That's $50 in bonus money to boot. Uh. Look at it coming off the boards. $50 in bonus money and a chance for more. Watch out. Not going to get any help in terms of being knocked over, but he's got some. Wood scurrying around the seven pin. And again, he has to wait for it to settle down, especially that one piece that's rolling in the back toward the seven pin right now. So do you go directly at it? Probably you do. And that's why. Too far to the right. There was enough of an opening for the ball to get through and hit it directly, but couldn't quite make that happen. 79 through six for Jay Leach. Now Bob Whitcomb working on a spare. Threw it past the head pin, but got a pretty good drop. But not a real fun spare to shoot. One, three, seven of the eight. Almost got it. Gave it a great run. So Jay Leach will take the lead in this match at the halfway point of the first string. A 58 half up against the 70 half that Leach put on the board. A 
one ninety nine high single for Bob Whitcomb. Once again, he threw it past the head pin. Well, that was not too helpful. Would rather have had that three pin stay. Missed the head pin again, which was key. An 11 pin lead for Jay Leach after six boxes. First string of the championship match from Lita Lanes in Nashua. They continue to fall like dominoes. The two pin all that remains. That's the fourth mark of the string for Jay Leach. A lot of people working behind the scenes to make it all possible for you to watch Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNDS TV 50. Today's crew led by our director Larry Taylor filling in for Vic Cross. Our chief engineer Paul Hunter working the cameras Steve Giordani, Steve Dross and Matt Woodson. On the replay machine is Dave McCarthy. Graphics being handled by Lisa Law. Great run there by Leach almost picking up that spare. Audio being handled by Ken Knight. Our official score from host Lita Lanes is Chris Bovair. And our thanks to Ray Simino, the proprietor of Lita Lanes, and Sean Howard, the general manager, for all of their kindness and considerations during the course of our telecasts throughout the season. They have been magnificent hosts. And very considerate to the um, many, many people that come to watch the competition by putting in some extra seating, a large screen TV off to the side for those that don't have real good centered seats on the 50 yard line as Dick and I do, and you at home also. And eight box for Bob Whitcomb. Down 19 pins. Up against an open frame here. Right in the pocket. And the seven pin still stands. Bobby worked his way into the top 10 ratings for this year's WCBC World Camelpin Bowlers Congress. Coming at number nine means for six tournaments, dropping the lowest, making it actually five. Uh, he ranks in the top 10 of all the highly esteemed Candlepin bowlers. He finished fourth in the Mohegan Bowlerdrome tournament in Webster back in March for $175, helping his ranking up to number nine for the year. Well, he picks up a 10, could have had a spare. He might regret that one down the road, leaving the seven pin. Put it right in the pocket between the one and the three, but couldn't convert the spare. One fourteen for Jay Leach with a box to go. Total prize money today, fifteen hundred dollars, a grand to our winner, and five hundred dollars the runner up. The one, the eight, and the ten. Wood is settling down. Jake gives it a shot, looks at it. Probably won't use it. If he does use it, it'll be by accident, I would think. Well, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you decide. Was that an accidental use or deliberate? I'm not sure that that would cause anything that it, it, uh, no it really didn't yeah, it did but it looked like it on first uh, first blush oh, 
Yeah, still moving. Oh, look at that pin move. Another one moved a bunch of inches. It's a six pin fill and a 130 first string for Jay Leach. So now Bob Whitcomb has his work cut out for him in the final two boxes of the first string. Breaks up the split. Two marks, he could still be in the 120s. And this is uh, an easy spare shot if he hits the object pin. And he did. That's the third mark of the first string for Bob Whitcomb. was a powerful hit. Not sure how the eight pin stayed. Got a piece of wood closing in on it, but he's got a nice direct shot. He has to be careful not to go to the left on this because he'll, uh, he'll hit that dead wood. And then uh, it's anybody's guess what happens. That dead wood rolling in from the right side, well, it stopped. If it had taken another roll or two, might have made it an easier shot. There's a little margin for error here. He doesn't need it. One fifteen plus a ball. So it'll be around a 10 pin advantage for Jay Leach going into the second string, depending on what Whitcomb gets with this ball. In the pocket, he gets seven and still it stays at seven. A 122 first string for Bob Whitcomb, an eight pin lead for Jay Leach as we head to the middle string in this championship match from Lita Lanes in Nashua as Candlepin Stars and Strikes continues on WNDS TV 50. It's an eight pin lead for Jay Leach as we head to the second string of our championship match and first up in string number two is top seed Bob Whitcomb. It's a pretty fair beginning. And our first strike of the day. Watch it again. We have $1,125 in our triple strike jackpot. Once again, laws of physics defied. <laughs> Double mark for Bob Whitcomb to start out. The second string. He finished the first string with two in a row. He'll be looking for some bonus change next time up. And a tough break for Jay Leach on his first ball of the second string. Nursing an eight pin lead starting the second of three games. If you weren't with us last week, Mike Morin talked about uh, a newspaper article that he saw from California where Candlepin Bowling has been introduced, has been there for a couple of years, and uh, is attempting to get its, uh, its game established. Yeah, there's some folks out in California that would like to see Candlepin Bowling proliferate as 10-pin bowling has, but it's an uphill struggle. It's really tough to introduce just a very small community to a really fun game. There's no television shows, there's no publicity. It's strictly word of mouth, and only about 25 people at this particular bowling center in Tracy, California, are dedicated candlepin bowlers. I wonder if they're transplanted New Englanders. I don't think they are, but they say whenever anybody from New England comes out, they're always delighted to see a little bit of home at a place when you'd least expect to see it. Spare for Jay Leach in the second frame, which he needed badly because Whitcomb had two marks in a row in his first two boxes. Now he looks for bonus money. On the head pin. An eight pin drop. This is a $50 shot for Bob Whitcomb right here. Put the money back in the vault. Yeah, that piece of wood uh, deflected the ball and didn't let it carry over to the six pin.
But he's a very steady. He's definitely locked in. He's got the range. Finished very strong and a good start this game. Some good momentum going. Gonna ride the wave. Well, that's the two, four, five, seven, and the ten over on the right side with some wood that could coax the ten pin down if he hits the pins on the left correctly. Not quite. Bob's one of the more uh, demonstrative bowlers. After he releases the ball, he gives it all of the body English he possibly can. Keep the camera on him and watch him move. Not, a, not so much on a single pin shot like this, but on, on his first ball in particular. Waiting for that wood to settle. Every pin counts. 58 for four. For Bob Whitcomb, now Jay Leach working on a spare. Is he father of three ch children are six, four, and seven months? Nicholas, Chelsea, and Morgan. Doesn't leave him a whole lot of time for too many activities, but he does uh, get himself involved with his son Nicholas's t-ball games. Didn't like it right off the bat. The eight pin lead that he enjoyed after the first string is gone and he now trails by five. Double dribbled that one, but got lucky and broke the split up only the two and the four stand. Much smoother release on that. Jazz picked the pin. Did pay off, unfortunately. A nine box and a 44 as we go to the break. A 14 pin lead in the string for Bob Whitcomb as he's take come from behind. He trailed by eight after one. Now he has a six pin lead in the match as we near the halfway point of this championship match from Lita Lanes in Nashua. Candlepin Stars and Strikes continues on WNDS TV 50. Bob Wickham now leads the match by six pins as we are nearing the halfway point. He trailed by eight after the first string has a 14 pin lead in this match. Held on to that one a little longer than he would have liked to and it went to the left. Rather challenging mix of pins left for him. He's just, he's one aerobics exercise during the course <laughs> of a match with all of the gyrations he goes through. And as warm as it is today, he's going to work up a pretty good lather here by the end. We are taping this uh, broadcast at the end of March. You may recall that really warm stretch of weather, probably about 90 degrees as we speak outside here in Nashua. On the head pin, Bob Whitcomb. Could not avoid the split. Wow. Boy, was he robbed. The pin came in front and then came back again. It, it took two, uh, two shots at the uh, four pin. Didn't go. 77 through six. But a couple of open frames and an opportunity for Jay Leach. Missed the head pin. Jay bowling for only eight years competitively.
And sports a 120 average here at Lita Lanes, where his teammate is keeping score for the folks here at Lita Lanes in the audience, Chris Bover. His father is in attendance as well, and of course, a lot of the people that work here know him and certainly wish him well. This very, very tight championship match for $1,000 first prize. Here's a strike for Jay Leach right in the one three pocket. Watch it again as he threw this one well. Needed it to tighten things up just a little bit. As Whitcomb buries it right through the middle. A spread eagle with a sleeper. for Whitcomb. He has gone markless since the second frame. That's five non-marked frames in a row, but do, pinning well. Three tens and two nines in that uh, five mark stretch, that five box stretch. likes to ride his bike down along the Cape Cod Canal on a day like today. I'll bet he's not no. alone. The yes. canal road must be mobbed on this day that we're taping. There's a good shot for a nine box. And a 95 through eight for Bob Whitcomb. Now Jay Leach working on a strike. Eleven hundred and twenty five dollars if you can throw two more in a row. He came close. Yeah, he'll be happy to take a good fill here. Hopefully a spare. Now that wood is rolling over. Now it's coming back again. He'd like to stay have it stay out of the way of course. Whereas when your bowler's at the level Dick and I, we, we love as much wood as we can get. <laughs> well, Pray for that wood and just right. take your chances. And if you miss it well, blame it on the wood. <laughs> he played it by itself. Nicely done. Two marks in a row now for Jay Leach. And an opportunity for some bonus money. He had $50 in bonus money in the first string. And a great opportunity for more bonus money right now. And he's about to take the lead here. He has in the match. There it is, three marks in a row. $50 in bonus money for Jay Leach. And the lead in the match is back to Jay. Whitcomb having some difficulty finding the head pin. Still having trouble finding it. One of the tens stand. Nine frame. Well, without a mark here, if, if, if Whitcomb does not mark in his 10th frame, he could face a serious deficit going into the third, third string. He really needs a mark right here. 696 was good enough for first place. Well, that's a big shot for Bob Whitcomb, and now he needs to make it. That one's going to be tough to miss. Uh, got, to, got to hit that lead pin. He didn't get it. Hi. That's a big miss. Wow. 
114. Now, how much will Jay Leach lead by going into the third string? That's the question. He will lead, but the unknown is how much. Well, he did not fill the spare with a heavy number. Three. He had an eight pin lead coming into this match. Temporarily relinquished it to Bob Whitcomb and now leads again. by 10 plus a box plus the eight in the first string. Didn't get a break. Well, maybe he gets a little bit of a break with that wood coming around, but that's not much. Not much, no. Whoa, it's a great try. And a 124, he adds 10 to his lead of eight. He leads by 18, going to the third and final string of our championship match from Lita Lanes in Nashua, New Hampshire. Don't go away. Our champion will be crowned at the end of this match with one string to go as Candlepin Stars and Strikes continues on WNDS TV 50. One string remains in this championship match, and it's an 18-pin lead for Jay Leach over Bob Whitcomb. It'll be Jay Leach first to bowl in this final string. Bowling at his home lanes, Lita Lanes in Nashua. Dick Lutz with Mike Morin, our entire WNDS TV 50 crew. Happy to have you with us for this championship match, and our tournament of champions begins next week. And a spare for Leach to start out. Great way for Jay to open the third string. As he tries to really put the pressure on Bob Rick on the spare. The pins continue to fly. Look at this. He busts up the split and leaves himself just the seven pin. And for a fleeting second thought, he might be able to steal a strike. Yeah, I don't think there's any way around it. He's got to use the wood here. Does not appear to be angled well, that one sh one pin in the corner, but... Nope, unbelievable. I thought he was going to have a problem with it, judging by the angle of the pins. And a 10 box. Next time you're in Nashua, and you get the hunger pangs, head for the Kahala Chinese Restaurant and Lounge right next door to Lita Lanes in Nashua at 350 Amherst Street, Route 101A, exit 7W off the Everett Turnpike if you're coming from the south. Or exit 8 off the Everett Turnpike if you're coming from the Manchester area. The Kahala Chinese Restaurant and Lounge with takeout, delivery, a wonderful luncheon buffet, banquet facilities, and there's entertainment on the weekends as well. Bob Whitcomb makes the shot. What a great shot for Whitcomb and a big spare to go up against the spare that Leach had in his first box. Watch that action. Big spare for Bob Whitcomb. Now filling the spare. On the nose, he cannot stay out of the split that time. Six in the fill. The Kahala Chinese Restaurant and Lounge for takeout, the number 603-889-5200. But don't forget the luncheon and dinner buffets. They are terrific. Every time we come to Lita Lanes, we head next door to the Kahala for the luncheon buffet. We highly recommend it to you. The Kahala Chinese Restaurant and Lounge, right next door to Lita Lanes on Amherst Street, Route 101A in Nashua. The phone number again, 603-889-5200. Do what we do at Channel 50. Head to the Kahala. Chinese restaurant yep. and lounge. But don't do what Dick does. He stuffs his pockets with a lot of extra crab rangoons when he leaves. <laughs> it is kind of messy. <laughs> yes. I'm sure your wife appreciates the dry cleaning bills. We like those crab rangoons. Leach with a five pin still standing. And 
lengthening his lead. Trying to have a couple pins. Bounced it down, missed the spare. Take the 10, he would rather have had the spare, obviously. How big does that miss look now? Well, it cost him 10 pins, essentially, to miss that spare. Boy, as soon as that left his hand, you knew it was a strike. It was just thrown so nicely and hit just perfectly on the Brooklyn side of the head pin. Now Bob Whitcomb needs to respond. He throws a beauty. Leaves a very solid seven pin still standing. Good pin picking by Bob Whitcomb to pick up the spare. Now he's up against the strike. Put on the board by Jay Leach. Well, look at all the wood on the deck. A lot of it, but will it do any good? Well, when you've got the 5, 7, 10, I don't think it can hurt, really. You just, this is one of those shots you just kind of throw it down there and take your chances. Ten pin stands. So Bob Whitcomb has his work cut out for him the last six frames. We come back from the break here in just a moment. That'll be a nine box for Bob Whitcomb and a 50. through four as we'll go to the break as we have six frames remaining in this championship match as Jay Leach tries to hang on to the lead. Don't go away as Candlepin Stars and Strikes continues on WNDS TV 50. Jay Leach getting ready to bowl in the fifth box of the third string in the championship match of this seventh ladder series. The winner joining six other ladder series winners in our tournament of champions, which begins next week. Gary Carrington is the top dog so far at 455, and he has not been seriously challenged for the top seed, so he'll only have to bowl three games versus the other men who will scramble to get to him. Watch out, almost got it. <laughs> So he'll take a nine fill on his fourth frame strike and a nine for the box as well. Uh, looking over at the comparable box, he's added eight pins to the lead, so he has a 26 pin lead in the match. And Bob Whitcomb really cannot afford to go very many frames without marking now. Well, Bobby hasn't hit his average yet today. Jay Leach has exceeded his in both of his first two matches. That's a terrific shot Beautiful. by Jay Leach. As he continues to apply the pressure to Bob Whitcomb, he just put that right in the perfect spot. Swished everything over toward the 10 pin. Whitcomb buries it. How long did it take these pins to fall? Not long at all. Third mark of the string for Whitcomb. Right in the pocket again. Breaks up the split. And the crowd <laughs> trying to root that pin over. Well, yeah, that, that'll, that can work. I'm afraid, though, if he hits that to Deadwood to the left, it might ricochet the ball around the seven. Now nice got it shot. Up. Well done by Bob Whitcomb responding to the call. Trying to pull closer. 
a terrific match in progress down to the final five frames. On a Mark Leach. Look at those pins go and they continue to go. An eight pin fill on the spare. And we always preach about hitting the head pin. Well, sometimes you don't have to. All right, Dr. Morin, what do you do here? I think it'd go pretty high on the uh, wood on the left, capping it almost. That's what he did, like and that. that's what he did. It's nice to be right once in a while. <laughs> and I'm glad it went for him. Two marks in a row for Jay Leach. He's making it very difficult to Bob Whitcomb to gain ground. Once again, he avoids the split. And not only that, oh, look at that. It just stands up. How do you figure that one? Three marks in a row, $50 in bonus money for Jay Leach. Watch it again real quick. Watch that pin move. It looks like it started to go, and then, it got and then all of a sudden it got wedged between another piece of dead wood. Now Whitcomb tries to respond. Both bowlers pulling out all stops. Both sensing this is the last chance to get into the Tournament of Champions. That's fair for Bob Whitcomb. $50 in bonus money for Bob Whitcomb. He has to match those marks and some. Crossed over to the Brooklyn side. And I think well, he likes helps that. Oh, that's a beauty. Wood helps him out. You don't want that second piece in there now. I don't know that that hurts. You got to go for the stripe though on the uh, on the back pin. He'll take the spare, another twenty dollars in bonus money, and a three-pin lead in this game for Bob Whitcomb. The match box to box, still fifteen pins in Jay's favor. Down to the very end and the last opening for the Tournament of Champions. Leach on the head pin. Now a little bit thin, but still a spare opportunity. Very makeable, the 2 4 5. And more bonus money if he can pick this one up. Oh, he left the four pin. You don't see him show a whole lot of emotion, but he. He thought he had it. He thought he had it, for sure. The door opens a crack for Bob Whitcomb. Just a crack. He got great action on he some. He was a very lucky man, but uh, shots that are not on the head pin. I'm not sure if that wood is touching tough, tough the back touching. pin. Right, I don't know. Nope. Look at this. He'll see that one in his dreams tonight. I assure you that. And I think that wood's okay. Deadwood line comes out 24 inches from the center of the head pin. Generally, if you can see it in the light of the lanes, it's playable. Rolls off now. anyway. A 140. Bob Whitcomb needs 158 to stay alive. Well, if Jay Leach goes on to win, he'll be seated fourth dick in the Tournament of Champions with a 394. He really needs to make this spare. Ooh. Wow. Very disappointed. Feel the vibrations when he jumped up on the lanes. Well, he was coming in losing by, uh, what, 14 pins. Looks like he needs a double strike here, huh? Up, 
It won't be enough. Jay Leach advances to the Tournament of Champions. And that is it. He will win the string, but he will lose the match. Finishes with a 142 third string and a 394 for Jay Leach to a 378 for Bob Whitcomb. Jay Leach has a spot in the Tournament of Champions and we'll come back to meet our bowlers in just a moment when we wrap it up from Lita Lanes on WNDS TV 50. Leach has defeated Bob Whitcomb by a final score of 394 to 378. A check for $500, the runner-up prize going to Bob Whitcomb. Congratulations Thank to you. you, the number one seed, and a uh, tough match. Yeah, it seems like every time I got a little run together, Jason answered my call and got the big marks in the end, and um, he ended up pulling it out in the finish. Well, congratulations for your top seed. We look forward to seeing you again. Thank you. Bob Whitcomb from Weymouth, Good Massachusetts. Good luck to you, Bobby. And now the bonus ball contest, and Jay Leach will roll a ball, and we'll see if we can match up a winner in our bonus ball contest with our new participant in the Tournament of Champions, Jay Leach. Fred Eagle, this is the time to do it. And let's pull a card out. And this is Helen Mailman of Gardner, Massachusetts. She picked eight, and it was a four-pin drop, so Helen wins the consolation prize, a set of mugs from NNR Trophies of Winchenden, Massachusetts. And we have 10 free strings of bowling to Lillian Bergener of Merrimack, Massachusetts. Hers was the second card pulled out. Let's bring Jay Leach on to the set and congratulate him for his win. And we will present him with a check uh, for $1,000. Should I give it to you or should I give it right to your wife? I'll give it to my wife. She's right here. Well, she'll get it soon enough. We have some bonus money for you, too. We also have, uh, let's see, $150 in additional bonus money that we'll be giving to you. And more importantly, a place in the Tournament of Champions, which begins next week. That's got to be an exciting thing. Uh, yeah, it's, it's not quite what I expected, but... Uh... I'm in there. You're there. Let's, let's go. What about the match? Talk about the match and uh, what, what thoughts you had during the match with uh, with Bob Whitcomb and uh, you, how you were bowling. Well, I know Bobby from bowling Friday nights, and uh, to beat Bobby, you got to be on top of your game. And uh, I was off the head pin, but I was getting uh, really decent leaves off the head pin and was able to take advantage of them. These pins always this wacky at this lane. These lanes, this is Lita Lanes. You know the lanes better than anybody. They were doing strange things. Uh, yeah, once in a while. You don't know what to expect sometimes. Well, congratulations to you. We look forward to seeing you in the Tournament of Champions next week. There you go. Jay Leach. Our newest member in the Tournament of Champions, and here's what the Tournament of Champion field looks like now as we get ready to begin. Seven bowlers. In six weeks. And we're going to start next week with a couple of Riches. Rich Clark and Rich Hawk Hallis will uh, go on to battle one another, hoping to get to Joe Ashline. Two weeks from today, you're going to see Jason Leach once again taking on the winner of the first uh, week that we had. Then it's on to uh, Rob Burkeel. Mike Morgan and sitting atop with 455 is Gary Carrington. You'll see him in six weeks. Should be fun, and we look forward to it as well and hope you'll join us for the Tournament of Champions, which begins next week. And Jay Lee Chara, newest member of the elite field that will be participating for all of the marbles. Thanks for joining us for our WNDS TV 50 crew and Mike Moore, and I'm Dick Lutz. We'll see you next time on Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNDS TV 50.